Bart y Lisa estarán bien después de un poco de TLC. Por TLC quiero decir tomar Lorexo Cortisona. Y por un poco, quiero decir un régimen de cuatro semanas. Oh, ¿Esteroides? ¿Hay efectos colaterales? Nada serio. Tal vez aumento de peso temporal. Cuatro semanas después. ¡Rápido, niños! No quiero que lleguen tarde a su primer día de escuela. ¡Ah! ¡Un nuevo año escolar! ¡Libros nuevos! ¡Borradores rosa! ¡Una carpeta donde cierran los anillos! ¡Me encanta! ¿Sabré qué pasó con los huevecillos de mantis religiosa que dejé en la oficina de Skinner? Mm, mm. Si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo, este año todo saldrá bien. ¡Oh! ¿Qué tal esa pancita? Mm. ¡Miren a la Gordis! <risa> ¡Gordis! ¡Gordis! ¡Ya es hora! ¡No lleguen tarde a la escuela! Bart y Lisa estarán bien después de un poco de TLC. Por TLC quiero decir tomar Lorexo Cortisona. Bart y Lisa estarán bien después de un poco de TLC. Por TLC quiero decir tomar Lorexo Cortisona. Tomar Lorexo Cortisona means to take Lorexo Cortisone, which is a medicine usually prescribed for allergies and other diseases. This is a joke referring to the English abbreviation TLC, meaning tender loving care. Another common type of medicine you can use when feeling unwell. Bart y Lisa estarán bien después de un poco de TLC. Por TLC quiero decir tomar Lorexo Cortisona. Y por un poco, quiero decir un régimen de cuatro semanas. Y por un poco, quiero decir un régimen de cuatro semanas. Régimen de means literally regimen of. This phrase is commonly used to refer to a specific plan, either in a process of recovering from a disease or of losing weight. Y por un poco, quiero decir un régimen de cuatro semanas. Oh, ¿esteroides? ¿Hay efectos colaterales? Esteroides, hay efectos colaterales. I means there is or there are. And yes, it's always I. No matter if you're talking about singular or plural nouns. When using I in a question, like March is doing, it works as an equivalent to the English is there or are there any. On the other hand, efectos colaterales means side effects. This is a synonym of efectos secundarios, which is actually more commonly used in conversational Spanish. So, hay efectos colaterales or hay efectos secundarios can both be translated into are there any side effects? Oh, ¿Esteroides? ¿Hay efectos colaterales? Nada serio. Tal vez aumento de peso temporal. Nada serio. Tal vez aumento de peso temporal. Aumento means in this context gain, but it can also mean increase or rise. And aumento de means gain of. Peso here means weight, but it can also mean burden. Finally, temporal means temporary, but be careful, because this same word can also refer to rough weather, like a big windy storm. Especially with words that have multiple meanings, hearing them in context is the most effective way to retain them and learn how to use them confidently. But of course, you have to be lucky enough to come across videos that feature the exact words you need to learn, right? And even if you do, subtitles are not always available, so you may get lost with new words and need to post to look them up in a dictionary, etc. That's what I personally love from Fluent U. Because language experts have already curated lots of real life videos for the app, like movie clips, cartoons, song videos, and created a language learning lesson out of each of them. So you can choose your favorite videos from FluentU's catalog, and every video has interactive subtitles that let you check meanings on the go, save words on vocabulary lists, and even get other example clips where they're used so that you learn while you enjoy fun content. Plus, FluentU creates personalized quizzes based on your target vocabulary so you retain everything you learn. Click the link in the description and try it for free for two weeks. Nada serio. Tal vez aumento de peso temporal. Cuatro semanas después. ¡Rápido, niños! No quiero que lleguen tarde a su primer día de escuela. Cuatro semanas después. Rápido, niños. No quiero que lleguen tarde a su primer día de escuela. Rápido usually means fast or quick, 
but this word is also used as an interjection to ask someone to hurry. She doesn't want Bart and Lisa que lleguen tarde. This means literally that you or that they arrive late. Que means in this context that and lleguen is the subjunctive of the verb llegar, both for the ustedes and the ellos ellas conjugations. This verb form is used when talking about a wish, a doubt or a possibility something that may or may not happen. So the expression rápido, no quiero que lleguen tarde can be translated into hurry up, I don't want you to be late. Cuatro semanas después. Rápido niños, no quiero que lleguen tarde a su primer día de escuela. Ah, oh, un nuevo año escolar, libros nuevos, borradores rosa, una carpeta donde cierran los anillos, me encanta. Un nuevo año escolar, libros nuevos, Borradores rosa, una carpeta donde cierren los anillos, me encanta. Borradores is the plural of borrador, meaning eraser, and it refers to the erasers used at school. Another way of calling this in Spanish is gomas de borrar, and rosa here means pink, but this word primarily means rose, the flower type. You may notice that even if Lisa is talking about borradores in plural, She says rosa instead of rosas to describe them. This is because in Spanish, color names that come from nouns, like type of fruits or flowers, are generally used in singular even when describing plural nouns. Other examples of these colors are lavanda, limón, café, naranja, etc. Una carpeta donde means a binder where and cierren is the subjunctive form of the verb cerrar. To close. And again, this verb form is used when talking about a possibility. Finally, anillos is the plural of anillo, ring, and this word is used to refer to any type of small circular object, not only jewelry. So all together, she says, Ah, un nuevo año escolar, libros nuevos, borradores rosa, una carpeta donde cierran los anillos, me encanta. Sabré qué pasó con los huevecillos de mantis religiosa que dejé en la oficina de Skinner. Sabré qué pasó con los huevecillos de mantis religiosa que dejé en la oficina de Skinner. Huevecillos means little eggs, as it is the diminutive of huevos, eggs. Another way to say this is huevitos. Then mantis religiosa means praying mantis, which is a type of insect that, well, now lives in Skinner's office. ¿Sabré qué pasó con los huevecillos de mantis religiosa que dejé en la oficina de Skinner? Mm, mm. Si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo, este año todo saldrá bien. Si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo, este año todo saldrá bien. Si means if, and this is how conditional sentences start in Spanish. As you may know, these sentences are used to talk about hypothetical situations with a condition described in the first part, the C clause, and a result described in the second, the main clause. Respetamos mean we respect, nuestros means literally ours, espacios mean spaces, and when followed by the preposition de, meaning of, it tends to refer to an area designated for something specific, in this case, for trabajo, work. So, si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo means literally if we respect our spaces of work, which can be translated into if we respect each other's workspace. That was the C clause in the sentence, and then the main clause will describe the possible result if the previous condition is met. Este año means this year, todo means everything, and saldrá is the future of salir. Finally, bien means good, fine or well, then the whole main clause, este año todo saldrá bien, means literally this year everything will come out well, but can be translated into this year will go fine. Mm -hmm. Si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo, este año todo saldrá bien. Oh, ¿qué tal esa pancita? Oh. ¿Qué tal esa pancita? ¿Qué tal can be translated into how about, but this colloquial phrase has some different uses. The most common one is as an equivalent to how are you or how is it going, and another one is to ask someone's opinion about something, but it can also be used as a rhetorical question to actually point something out at someone, which is what Marge is doing here with Lisa and her pancita. And this cute word is a diminutive of panza, a way of saying belly in Spanish. 
So, ¿qué tal esa pancita? Can be translated into Look at that belly. If you want to review these phrases later, we've prepared a free PDF. Click the link in the description below. Oh, ¿qué tal esa pancita? <coughs> Miren a la gordis. <laughs> gordis. <coughs> Miren a la gordis. Miren a la means literally look at the. And it's a very common way for kids to tease each other. Gordis or gordi means chunky, as it's a diminutive of gordo or gorda, meaning fat. Diminutives tend to soften the meaning of words, so of course, calling someone gordis sounds less harsh than calling them fat. It's also very common to use gordis among friends, couples, and when addressing younger members in the family, without this meaning in mind at all. Instead, it's used as a loving way to call others, just as you would call someone honey in English. So, miren a la gordis literally means look at the chunky, but can be translated into someone's getting chunky to point out at someone their weight gain. Miren a la gordis. <laughs> gordis. Ya es hora, no lleguen tarde a la escuela. Ya es hora, no lleguen tarde a la escuela. No lleguen means literally don't arrive. Being llegan, in this case, the imperative ustedes form of the verb llegar, to arrive, and tarde again means late. So we have llegan tarde again, this time preceded by a no. This structure makes a negative imperative conjugation, which is used to give an instruction of not doing something, in this case, not being late. So no llegan tarde means don't be late. As you may remember from when March said no quiero que lleguen tarde, the subjunctive ustedes conjugation of llegar is the same. Lleguen. Ya es hora. No lleguen tarde a la escuela. Oh. Okay, now it's your turn. Watch the video again without subtitles to see how much you understand. Bart y Liz estarán bien después de un poco de TLC. Por TLC quiero decir tomar lorexo cortisona. Y por un poco, quiero decir un régimen de cuatro semanas. Oh, ¿esteroides? ¿Hay efectos colaterales? Nada serio. Tal vez aumento de peso temporal. Cuatro semanas después. ¡Rápido, niños! ¡No quiero que lleguen tarde a su primer día de escuela! ¡Ah! ¡Un nuevo año escolar! ¡Libros nuevos! ¡Borradores rosa! ¡Una carpeta donde cierran los anillos! ¡Me encanta! ¿Sabré qué pasó con los huevecillos de mantis religiosa que dejé en la oficina de Skinner? Mm, mm. Si respetamos nuestros espacios de trabajo, este año todo saldrá bien. Oh, ¿qué tal esa pancita? Mm. Miren a la gordis. <risa> gordis. <risa> No lleguen tarde a la escuela. Oh. To learn more phrases that will boost your conversational Spanish, you should check this next video. My friend Teddy will teach you 30 essential Spanish phrases and will be quizzing you along the way. So it should be fun.